One of the most important features of the skeleton is its joints. The joints are what allow us to change shape and position and move. We have a ball and socket type joint at the shoulder region that moves around in many different directions. So we can raise our arms up, behind us, out to the side. If we move down to the elbow, what we see here is a hinge joint. So the elbow can bend back and forth like a hinge. There's also a rotation that occurs where we can move our hand back and forth. This is occurring as this bone, which is called the radius, rolls over this bone, which is called the ulna. And you can see it up near the elbow region. You can see that up near the elbow region, there's a nice round portion of this bone that just rolls back and forth. And that allows the hand to flip over back and forth. And of course we have flexibility at our wrist joint and at each of the individual fingers. So we can curl them up into a fist if we wanted to or straighten them out. The human hand is a marvelous creation consisting of 28 bones capable of a range of tasks from basic hard labor to performing a work of art. The hand doesn't contain many muscles. The muscles that animate the hand are in the forearm, connected to the fingers by ligaments. If I had all the muscles that do the grasping of my fingers in the palm of my hand, I wouldn't have any room to hold a ball or a bar or anything else I wanted to hold. But by having just the tendons run up through the fingers and leaving most of the muscle bulk in my arm, it's much easier for me now to grab something. So if you watch, you see the bulging in my forearm, but the action is taking place up here in the hand. There's the grasping. All the muscle bulk is a lot further down and removed from the site of action. We have similar movements in the lower extremity. The femur has a ball and socket joint, which is similar to the ball and socket joint we saw at the humerus up by the shoulder and it can rotate around. This is a much more complete socket than what we saw in the humerus. The humerus had an open socket where it met the scapula or shoulder blade bone. But the pelvis gives a much more complete and therefore much more stable cup shape to hold the top of the head of the femur. And that's very important for walking. So we have to have a very stable joint here to support our weight. If we move down to the knee region, the knee is also a hinge joint, and it swings back and forth, much like the elbow joint. But unlike the elbow joint, we don't have that rotation component. So where the tibia and the fibula are, that's these two bones here, this is tibia, this is fibula, you don't get rotation of your foot like you did on your upper extremity. Here's a knee, here's the patella in its normal position. As we bend it, because this patella is attached to the tibia, you see it down here now. But normally what happens is the patella glides up and down with the tibia, like this, because there's a muscle up here that attaches to the patella, which in turn then attaches to the tibia. So when your knee is bent, like this, that muscle has to come around the corner to attach. And as you straighten out, the patella rides up higher and higher and higher until you connect the joint together like this to get a straight knee joint. This is the femur. This is the tibia. And this is the fibula. The fibula really has a very peripheral role in helping out in supporting the knee joint. And that's why it's such a small bone. In fact, in some animals, it's so small it just tapers to a fine little needle-like point. If you've ever eaten a chicken drumstick and you find that little needle-like bone in there, that's really a pain in the neck because it's so sharp, that's what's left of a fibula in a chicken. In a horse, it's also a very small bone. They call it a splint bone. And if it breaks, it's, it's really trouble for a horse when they break their leg because that bone has such a sharp edge, it can move through and cut 
some of the ligaments and muscles in the area. The tibia is carrying most of the weight. And I often tell my students to remember the name fibula because it sounds like fibbing, like it's lying, because it's not really supporting the weight. It's the fibbing bone, the lying bone. And this is the patella, or kneecap. This would normally sit right over the knee joint, and it helps add leverage to this joint. The attachments of the muscles to the kneecap help to pull the leg into a straight position from a bent position.